When you look at your artwork mm -hmm. um, in mirror, in the mirror image, you can mm -hmm. see your mistakes a little bit easier. Oh, I see. So that's what this is. This is so yeah. I can I can I fix it on I draw it on one side and then I fix it on the other. Okay. And then um, and then these are scanned in the computer and uh, and printed out and oh, then I ink them. So that's that's what these are. These are these are the inks. Wow. Hi, I'm Christina Lin from TaiwaneseAmerican.org. I'm really happy to be here with Jean Lun Yang, who's a cartoonist. Um, you guys might know him for American Born Chinese and the comic book series Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, so Jean, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, so my first question is, what's the deal? Computer science major at UC Berkeley and now you're a comic book artist? <laughs> <laughs> That's the same question my parents had actually. So I did, I, I went to UC Berkeley and there um, I majored in computer science. The reason why I majored in computer science was because my dad, right before I went to college, told me, you know, if you, if you major in something practical, I will leave you alone. You can do whatever you want. You can become a garbage man. You can do whatever you want afterwards. You just have to have that practical major. So I did. I majored in computer science and after I graduated, I actually uh, worked as a programmer for a couple of years. And true to his word, my dad left me alone. He didn't say anything about my life. But after programming for a couple of years, I decided to, um, to do two things. I decided to teach, teach high school and I decided to start drawing my own comics. Um, and, and at that point, my dad didn't say anything, but every so often, every, every couple of months, I'd get this envelope from him. And this envelope would contain all these newspaper clippings. They'd be like one ads from Apple Computer or Microsoft <laughs> or, or little newspaper articles comparing teacher salaries to programmer salaries. That's what I think. Every, every, every couple of months I'd get that. And that finally stopped after American Born Chinese mm. was, uh, was published. Yeah. So, uh, so, so that, that question you asked, that's, that's the same thing my parents wondered. Yeah, so we know your dad is um, Taiwanese and that your mm -hmm. mom is from Hong Kong. So how did your parents um, feel about it ultimately? And like, did it ever support their influence on you? I, I think, um, you know, my, my parents, especially my dad, uh, my dad is very typical of of, a, of an immigrant, you know, an immigrant from any any part of the world. I think I think he worked really hard um, after he came to America, um, and uh, and he grew up in in poverty. He 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 had um, experiences of poverty in his childhood. So he's always had this very very practical mindset. He's always talked about the importance of making sure you can put food on your table and making sure you have clothes on your back and making sure you have health insurance, right? So from, from that practical perspective, I think um, a, a lot of his advice about uh, getting a practical major and, and making sure um, you have a, a steady income, I think a lot of that makes sense. Uh, and and I, think, I think growing up, um, when I was young, I really, I really butt heads with him a lot because all, all the way through growing up, what I really wanted to do was to draw comic books, was to draw cartoons. And, and from his perspective, that definitely was not a practical thing to do. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, as an adult, you know, now that I've, I've had some years in the real world, now that I have my own children, I'm starting to see a, a lot of the wisdom behind what he's saying. So, so really, I think that, that for me, and, and I'd say for a lot of Asian Americans, um, what we have to do is, is try to balance these two things. Take, take the, the desires of our hearts and our dreams and, and the wisdom from our parents and, and try to integrate them together. Yeah, so a lot of your work has actually been influenced by your Asian American experience. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about your Asian American experience? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, well, well uh, American Born Chinese I did in, in the year 2000. And at that point I'd been doing comics for a few years. And I'd always had these Asian American protagonists, but um, their Asian Americanness never played an important part in the story. So because my own cultural heritage is such an important part of how I understand my place in the world. I knew I really wanted to do a project that was focused on that. So that's what American Born Chinese is. And even though American Born Chinese is fiction, it really did pull a lot from my own experiences. So for instance, uh, in the book there's this character named Timmy. He's, uh, he's this brown haired uh, uh, white kid, European American kid. And a lot of the really terrible things that um, are said, the really culturally insensitive things that are said in the book are said by this character. That character is based on this group of boys that I knew in junior high. Oh. Uh, I went to junior high in the South Bay. The community that I grew up in is now like, I don't know, it's like 60-70% Asian. It's really Asian now, right? But, but when I was growing up, it was not like that at all. Uh, when, when my parents and I first moved into that community, I remember my, um, my parents 
actually went to my school and asked for the addresses of all of the other Chinese families in that neighborhood. And there were like three. And then we made, we made house oh. calls, right? We, we would go and introduce <laughs> ourselves. Now if you did the same thing, people would think you were weird. But that's how, that's how not Asian it was. That's how, that's how much of a minority we were. So, so as I was growing up, the, the community slowly changed. By the time I got into junior high, um, there was actually uh, a, a significant minority of Asians uh, at my school. But we were still definitely a minority. So in junior high, I knew this group of boys. We used to call them the stoners. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they wore these heavy metal t-shirts. They wore ripped jeans. And the rumors that they went to the back parking lot after school and did these really terrible things. In, in junior high, I was hanging out with a, with a small group of Asian American boys. Now, whenever um, my group of friends and this group of stoners would pass each other in the halls, these stoners would almost always yell something mm -hmm. culturally insensitive at us, you know. So, so I took a lot of those words and I put them in my book, in, in, in the mouth of my character Timmy. Yeah. Now, as an adult, when I look back on these junior high experiences, I realize that um, they, they really affected me and they really affected the way I saw my place in the school and in the world. Uh, I remember thinking in junior high, I remember wondering if, the words that these stoners were saying were actually running through the minds of all of my non-Asian classmates. And I wondered if they were just the ones that were brave enough to say it. But everybody actually thought that way. So I think junior high was when I started feeling really uncomfortable, or not really uncomfortable, less comfortable hanging out with, with my non-Asian classmates. And that, that was when my, all of my closest friends were Asian. Uh, before then, when I was in elementary school, it was much more diverse. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so as, an adult, as an adult, I look back. I realized that that was really just my own insecurities. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm sure that those, the vast majority of my non-Asian classmates were perfectly fine and were not having those thoughts. But in the insecurity of, of my middle school years, I, re I really remember that affecting me. Yeah. So speaking of community, what is it like being an Asian American in the comic industry? Well, um, I, uh, I, I kind of think we, we have something of, a, of an Asian invasion yeah. in American comics right now. They're just, I, I don't have, I don't have actual numbers and statistics to back this up, but it seems to me like there are probably more Asian Americans working professionally in comics mm -hmm. than in any other uh, American entertainment medium. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of times after comic book conventions, you know, my, my friends and I, my cartoonist friends and I, will we'll hang out over a couple of beers and we'll talk about why this is. You know, it's a weird thing. If you go to any comic book convention, there are just Asians all over the place. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like going to Ranch 99 or something. So, um, so we would talk, you know, why? Why are there so many Asian Americans? So, you know, nowadays there's this huge influx of, of manga, of, of Japanese comics into America. And in fact, a lot of um, comic book fans who are under the age of 20, they, they primarily read manga. They don't really read American superhero comics. Manga um, and, and American comics, they, they have really different ways of telling stories. They, they each have their own unique idioms and, and their own unique traditions. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but what we're seeing now um, within comics all over the world, largely because you know, technology has brought us all together, uh, and, and uh, what we see is people, regardless of where you grew up, will read manga and American comics and European comics. So there's this conglomeration of all these different mm -hmm. styles. You know, now, now that's happening. But a, a lot of Asian Americans, even, even Asian Americans around my age, I'm in my late, late 30s, um, we grew up reading manga, both manga, both Asian comics and American comics. Mm -hmm. So our styles actually reflect um, this combination, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so maybe um, this combination of Western and Eastern influences is becoming more popular in the wider world. And we were kind of already there just simply because of our cultural yeah. heritage. Yeah. Well, that was really insightful. Thank you so much again. But <laughs> before we conclude, um, just for our Taiwanese American audience out there, any words of advice? If they want to get into comics, or any advice, from you. <laughs> any advice in general. Advice. Uh, well, I, I think I think one of the, one of the one of the big things that um, I've realized as I've as I've gotten older, is um, how there doesn't necessarily have to be that dichotomy between um, what my parents said and and what I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know that there there actually can be a balance between the two. It doesn't have to be one or the other. I kind of think. It's, it's part of American culture, or maybe American popular media to look for conflict and everything, but there doesn't necessarily have to be conflict yeah. there. So I think, uh, I, I guess my advice would be to, to look for that balance. So thank you once again for joining us today. Um, we're really thrilled to have you. And be sure to check out um, Gene's upcoming works. Um, follow him on jeanluenyang.com and also follow TaiwaneseAmerican.org on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you guys around. Bye. 
love you. Left handed. I am left handed. Wow. Yeah. And this is mine. <laughs> I like yours better. You have a full figure.